Hello guys, and welcome back to the MD Investor, the channel where we talk personal finance, increasing our financial IQ, so we can break the cycle of generational problems. If you're new, we talk about personal financial matters, learning all the things that they never taught us in school or at home or anywhere. If you're a regular, you already know. Today, today's episode is going to be a continuation of a series we've been doing about financial advice for the different decades of our life. We've done financial advice in the 20s, financial advice for the 30s, and today's episode, I did, you probably already guessed, financial advice in your 40s. Now, by the time you get to your 40s, you know, you are pretty much in a routine. People may call it a rut. You know, you know how to go to work, you know how to make money, you know how to do a lot of different things, right? You've been kind of um, doing it for a while now. My let's come to the financial matter. In your 40s, I would say most people are going to be one of two conditions. Condition number one would be you have been doing everything we have said up to this point. You've been investing, you've been saving, you've been living beneath your means not be keeping up with the Joneses and investing in the index fund. You've been doing all that stuff for now probably almost two decades, right? Since you started working in your 20s. If that's the position you're in, you're probably sitting pretty good right now. You probably have a large amount of assets in your accounts. And you're probably going to be on pretty much easy road or cruise control. Most of us are probably not going to be in that situation. The other group where you may find yourself is the group two, where you'd be like, oh my goodness, wow, I can't believe I'm in my 40. I just turned 40. And I have not been saving, I have not been investing, I didn't learn any of this stuff. I've been spending everything I've gotten um, from my um, job, and I can't believe time is flew by so quickly. Oh my goodness, I need help, what do I do? That is the position where a lot of us have found um, themselves. So in your 40s, you're probably at the height of your career. You've been working at your job now for probably 15 years. You have experience, you have moved up along the way. You probably have few debts. You probably, you know, like as if you've been doing it, doing, um, and, as we have said before, you probably have few debts. Probably with your mortgage, it's probably the only thing you have. However, if you're in that other group, in your, you may be 40, but still have consumer debts. Um, still have student loans and so on. Okay. So it's a crucial decade. So we can't waste time. We say that when you start investing early, the more time you have, the more your money will compound. So the less money you have to put in, or the more your money will grow. Right? For every dollar you put in at age 20, it will turn into $88. In your 30, it, every dollar will turn into $33. In your 40, every dollar will turn into $7. So you see, as time goes on, you have less time. There's less time for your money to grow. So no time to waste in your 40. Number one, I would say is continue investing. Continue investing in your 401k and your IRA. We have said that before in our video. You know, there's not much pension around anymore, and all of the money, all of the money you'll have in your retirement will be money you, that you put away. Continue investing in your 401k and in your IRA. Your 401k may have a match, so that's free money you want to be able to get access to. Continue to invest for your IRA, whether it's a Roth IRA or a traditional IRA. And even though you're 40 and you know you wish you could kind of go back and you know kind of invest earlier, you still have time. 40 the last decade you have where you can still put money in and still make it to a million dollars without putting an exorbitant amount of money. Let's put some numbers to it. At age 40, starting with zero, if you invest $500 a month, in an S&P 500 index fund or an S&P 500 ETF 
and you let it compound for the next 25 years until you're age 65, you know, getting about 10% return, you will end up with about $650,000. That's not bad to be started from zero at age 40. Five hundred dollars a month is not too bad. That's a bill. And you still end up with $650,000. 650000 dollars Plus you would have your Social Security, maybe. Now, again, if you're starting at age 40 and you're putting, say, $750,000. $750 a month in an S&P 500 index, you'll end up with about $973,000. Right? That's very close to a million dollars. If you want to get past the million dollars, start at 40 with zero in an S&P 500 index fund, let it ride for 25 years until you're 65, you'll have to put in $1,000 a month. $1,000 a month, and you'll end up with $1.3 million. That's not bad for starting, for getting such a late start. Continue investing, also in your non-retirement account, right? Continue investing in your non-retirement account, right? After you fill up that bucket, that retirement bucket, then you want to move over to the other bucket, which is the non-retirement uh, brokerage account. Invest in that as well, because that growth is going to be there as well. But that'd be number two. Continue to invest in your non-retirement account, right? Remember, we say time is short. This is the last decade within where we can really begin to get that growth before the official retirement at 65. Number three, I'll say the mortgage. A lot of people have, um, are very motivated to pay off the mortgage and they overpay, meaning they begin to put that extra money on the mortgage. Mortgage rates have been historically low. Obviously now mortgage rates are going up because of the uh, uh, inflation problems we're having. But a better use of your money may be not to overpay your mortgage and pour, put more th than is necessary, but maybe take that extra money and invest it that in your non-retirement brokerage account, okay? So don't get too into getting um, mortgage debt free and miss the opportunity to invest in the market to get that growth, which will be a better return than paying off your mortgage, right? Because if your mortgage is 3% and you paid it off, you know, your return is basically you're getting three percent, right? You, you you won't have to pay that three percent uh, interest um, because you're mortgage free, as opposed to maybe getting a ten percent return on money put in the market. Number four, and you could you know you could argue this could be number one. Your health. You know that you have a little pot belly. You have not been exercising probably for two decades now, ever since high school, and maybe you've known people that have that have, that have had health care around your age bracket. So this is the time you want to begin to take your health seriously. So you probably already have a gym membership. Maybe begin to start using it. Walking, um, watching your diet, okay? Um, watching the saturated fat that you eat, drinking more water, cutting out the soda. Just begin to have a, a healthier lifestyle, getting more rest. Stop the smoking and alcohol if you do that, right? Because they say health is wealth, right? You know, if you're not around, you enjoy all the benefits of this um, financial um, prosperity that you have. What is the point, okay? So take care of your health. Number five, um, you have to begin to start looking into will, right? Your will, not will, but your will. Meaning, um, if you were to um, pass, who you want your assets to go to? A lot of times people don't think about these things, almost like insurance. People don't think about these things until the inevitable happens, right? Until the worst case scenario happens. So begin to start, you know, get a will. Um, go see an attorney. Um, get a will. Who do you want? Where do you want your assets to be allocated? Because if you don't, you know who will make that decision? The state. Via the judge. That's what they call probate. It'll go to probate, and then a probate judge will allocate your resources according to the law of the state that you reside in. Do you want uh, strangers to be you know, divvying up your assets, right? Maybe the family members that you don't even know, people you, know, you don't want your assets to go to? So we're gonna start thinking about your will 
and have something in writing. POA or power of attorney. That's something else you want to start thinking about, right? If you were to become incapacitated and not able to make decisions regarding your assets and so on, um, who do you want to be making those financial decisions? That is your power of attorney, somebody you trust and so on. Begin to start thinking about that person um, that you'd want to to fill that role, the power of attorney. Health care property, similar situation. If you're incapacitated and not able to um, say what you want regarding health care, right? Whether it's feeding, feeding tubes or um, aggressive measures, who's that person that's going to make that decision? That is your health care property. So we got to start thinking something outside the box. Number six, 529. We talked about 529 in a previous video, right? Which is the kind of fun. Uh, this, uh, in, in your 40s, your kids are probably young, um, and you're, sort of thinking, you're thinking, okay, you know, I was sort of prepared for their college um, expenses by starting the 529. But it, I would say at this, at this stage of the game, it depends on how you find yourself. Do not sacrifice your retirement for your children's college education. Let me say that again. Do not sacrifice your retirement for your children's education. The simple fact being that your children can always take out loans. Your children can get a job. Your children can get grants, scholarships. There's a lot of things that your kids can do to fund their college. They can go to a cheaper school. They can go, they can go to um, a, a community college and then transfer. There's a lot of options out there for a kid's education. But there's no loans that you can take for retirement. There's no grants you can take for retirement. There's no scholarship for retirement. So do not sacrifice your retirement for your kid's education. First, you gotta fund your uh, your retirement. Okay, your IRA. Um, and then, if there is money left over, then you do your kids five two nine. Okay, because if you don't and you forget about your retirement to take your kids five two nine, guess what? When you are broke, those same children will have to come back and help you. So help yourself. Okay, a lot of parents we think that they are bad parents. If they didn't prepare for your kid, it just depends on the situation and the timeline, right? If you're starting early in your 30s, maybe that money would have grown and compound, and you, you, you know you could have put it in uh, maybe a smaller amount. Now you're in your 40, and you realize, yeah, if your retirement is on track, fine, contribute to the five nine. If it's not in your behind, no, take every dime and put into your retirement. Okay. Number seven, estate plan, and that's similar to you know number five, the um, will and power attorney. But estate planning is, how do you want your estate um, or the inheritance to be passed on to the next generation, okay? Uh, meaning, you don't want to give your 16-year-old kid or your 18-year-old kid access to $5 million. They're young and they're stupid and they're going to blow it, just like NBA and uh, uh, um, stars and NFL stars, they get all that money, they don't blow because they're young. So that's where you have like a, a trust. So you, you know, you set up a meeting with an estate planning attorney and you start discussing about a trust. Maybe you'll say, okay, you know what, after they complete college, they will get 5% of the money will be released. And after age 25, or when they get married, or they have their first child, you know, you don't put whatever type of um, stipulation on them, they'll get X amount of money. Okay, this is um, estate planning, and it is very important. Okay, so let's quickly review. So, financial advice for your forties, guys. The the, the the forties is a very important decade, right? Um, middle life crisis, different things begin to come up. If you get in a rut and in a routine, if you've been doing it well, you know you're probably seeing uh, you probably see your account grow to a very good amount. Where, you know, you've, especially if you've been working since 23, 24, 25, and you've been contributing, you know, 20% and so on, you've been seeing your accounts grow to a very good amount, but not everybody in that situation. And, and, and if you're not in a situation, you, you're starting with zero, then you begin to tighten up your belt and begin to really be hyper-focused. Let's review them again. Continue to invest in your 401k and your IRA. Continue to invest in your non-retirement brokerage account. Number three. Um, do not overpay the mortgage. Just pay the regular, take that extra amount and 
um, invest in your non-retirement broker account. Think about your health, number four, okay? Begin to be health conscious in terms of your food and nutrition and exercise and rest and your health maintenance, right? Make sure you get your prostate screening exam, screening exam, your um, your breath exam, your um, colonoscopy, your um, immunization, your vaccines, all of that stuff is um, related to your health. And number five, don't forget about your will, your power of attorney, and your health care proxy, right? Because in case you get um, incapacitated and not able to make those decisions. Your 529, I would say if you're in a good position and your retirement is on track, go ahead and contribute. Um, if you haven't started um, contributing to your retirement and you have to make a choice between your retirement and the kids 529, go with your retirement every time. Does not make you a bad parent. Your kids have other options for their college um, funding. You have no other option for your retirement. That may mean you're a bad parent if you're not able to uh, uh, contribute to their 529. And number seven, so I'm thinking about estate planning um, in, in terms of trust. Um, so that's all I got for you guys. If you enjoyed the video, give me a, uh, leave a comment, give me a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to the MD Investor, the place where regular people or increasing their financial IQ so they can break the cycle of generational poverty. And until next time, continue to command your money to grow.